Thank you to Sakuruko and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I thought it'd be nice to kind of go through the process of planning this particular calming piece. So let's first start off with some sketching and thumbnailing in my sketchbook as I find it a little bit easier for me to kind of like push out ideas a bit quicker and a little bit more efficiently by doing them in my sketchbook rather than doing them digitally. So usually at this stage, I would be also looking up references for potentially how I want to have the illustration kind of look like. So I'll look up like background elements, maybe compositions, or other items that might help complement the piece. But after that, I will do so kind of like the sketching and thumbnailing process first. So I'll show you some examples of some previous sessions that I did some thumbnailing because a lot of my thumbnails do look different depending on how I want the piece to be. Sometimes they're just notes, sometimes they're more like scribbles, sometimes they're very simplified like this where I kind of block out the little shapes rather than adding any details. And then sometimes they turn out just a little bit cuter um, depending on kind of like the simplicity of it as well. So for the gaming piece, I did want it to be kind of centered around Chinese New Year or the Lunar New Year, which happens to be today. So if you celebrate that, then I hope it's a wonderful holiday for all of you. But if you don't celebrate it, that's okay. Just treat this video as any other video and hopefully you'll kind of get a little bit more insight to how sometimes I plan my pieces whenever I do kind of full illustrations. So the one that I wanted to do for gaming I was kind of debating on different poses for how I wanted to kind of like frame him. All I knew is that I wanted to be a little bit more of a floatier or more of a jumping pose of some sort alongside with him and the lion kind of head. So I was trying my best to figure out if I wanted to go more vertical or horizontal and initially in the kind of blue thumbnails you saw earlier, I did them more horizontal, but I was, I was planning out the poses here, which I'm doing like several different iterations, a little bit larger than thumbnails, but I was kind of thinking maybe I'll go vertical so that I could get more of the lion head in frame. But in the end, you'll see that I kind of change up my decision a little bit later. So for the thumbnails, I do try to keep them on the simple side. Um, if I do want to add more detail, usually I will size them up like the ones on the left. But for the most part, for to make it a little bit more quicker and easier for me to flesh out ideas, I like to keep them like maybe around an inch or two, like the ones on the right side. So it's a little bit easier for me to manage. Sometimes I always use sticky notes to kind of layer up more ideas if I want to keep them all in one place. So once I have the ideas kind of like fleshed out a little bit, I feel a little bit more confident in moving on to the next stage. So for me, usually the next step is to actually start on the digital portion. Now, depending on the, I guess, complexity of the piece, I would actually do sometimes color comps or I'll try my best to sketch it out a little bit more thoroughly traditionally before I move on to this portion. So I'm kind of pushing past that part and moving ahead to drawing it digitally right away even though I didn't have a 100% concrete idea on what I wanted the piece to look entirely I was just gonna kind of mishmash a bunch of my thumbnails together and hopefully it will work out so I'm starting off with a bit of a larger brush to kind of plan out the kind of composition alongside with simplifying the pose for gaming so that I will have an easier time kind of sketching out the cleaner sketch and making sure that things look a little bit more proportionally right. So I'm kind of letting myself be rough at this stage, but trying my best to keep things kind of in order so that I don't make it too messy or I won't be able to understand my own rough sketch. So you can see that I started off with a vertical composition, but right here I'm kind of playing around with the idea if I wanted to do more of a landscape version instead, which you see that I went back to the portrait because maybe I thought I wanted to include more of the lion's head. But then as I was doing this portion, I noticed that the lion's head was kind of cut off anyways. So I don't think it would have hurt to kind of make it horizontal to give myself a little bit more breathing room on the right side. So I was looking at this kind of sketch and comparing it to what I had digitally and I noticed that maybe I wanted to include more of his body or his feet 
and give a little bit more breathing room on the right side. But instead, I think I ended up with a pretty similar pose that I did anyways with the vertical one. I didn't really expand more onto the left, but for the most part, I think it feels a little less cluttered. So I'm a little bit happy about that, but we'll see about that in the end anyways. So once I have my rough sketch done, I will go ahead and lower the opacity, move over to my sketching brush, which tends to be a little bit thinner. It also has a good kind of like pressure sensitivity, line weight, all of that, so that I can kind of be a little bit more detailed in terms of how I'm gonna treat this sketch. So even though I do add a lot of guidelines and keep my, kind of like the proportions and everything in my rough sketch, I still do like adding guidelines during this stage just to make sure that I'm not blindly following my rough sketch because I do make small adjustments here and there because I noticed that there were some things that I did want to correct, but I'm not gonna go back in my rough sketch to correct it before moving on to my cleaner sketch. I'll just make the adjustments during this stage, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to manage. But also, usually with the rough sketch having a good majority of my guidelines, it does help my sketch maintain a little bit of more of a cleaner look, which helps me with the cleaning up and kind of rendering process as I don't tend to do line work. I kind of use my sketch as the basis of my line work and kind of color underneath. So I don't really want it to be too entirely messy before we move on to the coloring portion. I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, Ga Ming is a character from Genshin Impact if you're not familiar. And because his character is very much focused on kind of like the celebration of the Chinese New Year, I definitely wanted to kind of time this video alongside with today because it will be, I think, officially the Chinese New Year technically. So yeah, I think it was more appropriately themed for today alongside with the fact that I like doing some kind of kind of like illustration for the lunar new year or chinese new year and who would have been better to draw other than ga ming but as usual i probably will draw um probably 17's china line for another illustration just because i've been doing that for several years and i would like to continue with that so hopefully i'll be able to squeeze that in for the most part but let's talk about the sketching a little bit so I do like switching brushes between when I'm working on the rough sketch versus on my cleaner sketch. So oftentimes I would use my painting brush or the brush that I use for rough coloring for the rough sketch. So it allows me to kind of stay a little bit more general and block out things a lot quicker. And then I don't have to worry about making it too messy and cluttered whenever I have to do my clean sketch. So I do like separating those into two layers and it just allows me to have a little bit more insight in terms of what I want the composition or the character placement, all of that to be before having to draw. So if I don't really feel like I need to do that, I will just go ahead and draw right away with my sketching brush and just make adjustments as I go. But sometimes I feel like that makes the character pose or the composition a little bit more filled with holes, if that makes sense. I feel like the pose might be a little bit awkward looking, maybe a little bit more stiff or improperly placed, or even just like the proportions of the character might be very off. But I think this helps me usually kind of combat that a little bit. I'm not the best with making poses super fluid, but it definitely helps me break out of just doing a front on facing pose if I need to, because I won't be too intimidated by having to do all the anatomy and thinking about placement and everything at the same time with like the character's head, their face, their clothing, any like moving parts or elements. And in this case, he also has like the lion head. So I want to make sure that his hands and arms are going to be properly placed so that there's enough space in between where he's going to be grabbing the underside of the lion head. So it's, it's just a kind of good to have it while kind of like planning, if anything. So I think there are going to be some decisions that I make that were very much not super conscious because I was on a call with friends. So I was kind of sketching on autopilot, which isn't great to do all the time. I think it's more apparent when I start doing the coloring process, which I will be prepping for very soon. And I'll talk about that probably more when we get there. 
Okay, so now we're going to kind of rearrange the layers so that we can prep for the coloring. I went ahead and duplicated our layers right here. I'm gonna hide the duplicates right here and then so as for the ones that are remaining visible, I'm going to go ahead and set those ones to multiply so that they will be properly prepped for when I will kind of tackle the coloring of the background. With the sketch done, I wanted to talk to you guys more about Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, experience Japan from the comfort of your own home with their beautifully packed snack boxes. This month, they are Valentine's Day themed. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box with 20 of their latest exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks. They are only available in Japan for a limited time. And for the month of February's Valentine's themed box, they are filled with so many delicious snacks that fit the love and kind of sweetness that comes from Valentine's Day. Some delicious snacks include strawberry or Ichigo Mugi Puffs, Bake Chocolate, and a cute strawberry shortcake Kitty Cat. While Sakura Co. is an authentic Japanese snack subscription box, Sakura Co. supports local Japanese snack makers, and each box comes with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks. But they also include Japanese teas, a special Japanese tableware, and just many, many snacks for you to choose from. These snacks are also Valentine's Day themed, which also includes some cute mini heart-shaped arare, strawberry chocolate crunch, and anko chocolate arare. The Japanese tableware for this month's box is their Kiko plate and firefly plate. You will receive one of the two designs. So in my box, I received the Kiko plate and it comes with this cute kind of half and half design and it's kind of a ceramic plate, which I find very cute and aesthetically holds all my little snacks if I want to eat um, at my desk. Both boxes come with a 24-page cultural guide, and the booklet includes information on each of the snacks in the box. This includes cultural information relating to that month and the location. This also has the allergen information and ingredients for each of the snacks. Also mentions if the snack is vegetarian friendly or not. Each month has a different theme, meaning that you get to try out a whole new selection of new treats and snacks every month. For example, Tokyo Treats box theme for the month of February is Be My Valentine, while Sakura Co's theme is Valentine's Indulgence. So to start out, I always want to try out the tea from the Sakura Co box. I haven't tried a Coco Sencha tea before, but this one has a really nice rich kind of green tea flavor, but has that nice subtle aftertaste and aroma of the cocoa. Very similar if you kind of had just a bit of a touch of chocolate mixed into it. So earlier, I was able to try some of the snacks, and I really loved the strawberry-themed flavor items from both of the boxes. The Kit Kat is always a delight to try out since it's always a new flavor, but I also really love the Bake Chocolat. I do like that they're also individually packed, so it's a little bit easier for me to give them to other people if I wish to. Also, for this month's little tea from the Sakura Co. box is definitely one of my favorites. I think it also pairs well with some of the other snacks in the box. I also was able to try out the Ume Renko chips. The Ume flavor kind of gives it that nice kind of tang or a little bit of sourness to the chips, which I really love. I also enjoyed the strawberry chocolate crunch. I just love the kind of milky strawberry taste alongside with that nice satisfying crunch of the snack. So if you would like to get a box for yourself or want to give it to your lovely friends or your family or even that little special somebody for the month of February, please check out the link in the description and get your boxes today. And thank you again to Sakura Co and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Now let's move on to the coloring process for gaming. Okay, so let's work on the coloring process. So this is kind of where I noticed that my brain was kind of going on autopilot mode because as I was talking to my friends and I wasn't fully giving my full attention, I kind of forgot about some of the color palettes I wanted to work with and some of the references that I had saved on my Pinterest. And I kind of threw out that idea out entirely. So the background that you're currently seeing right now is going to be scrapped as I did not want this color palette. So we're going to go ahead and hide this, make a new layer, and we'll start from scratch again. <laughs> I wanted to actually have more of a blue or more kind of teal focused background because I am going to be working a lot with, I guess like yellow, reds, and oranges. So I want something to be a little bit more contrasting but not too distracting but i don't think like the sunset background would have fit the entire color palette for like 
gaming and the flames and the lighting so i wanted to go something a little bit more cooler almost towards green in a sense so to help complement the intensity of like a lot of the reds yellows and oranges that i want to have for gaming alongside with the background now, a portion that I kind of regretted in terms of making this illustration is the fact that I did not plan the background properly, nor did I really plan out foreground elements other than the fact that I knew I wanted to have some kind of lanterns in the front. So me even doing some of the detailing in the background, I feel like they were unnecessary. It would have been fun to dial back some of the effects later and maybe do more of that misty kind of mountain background that I wanted to do initially. Um, but I think even after this video is posted, I probably will draw Gaming again and I'll play around with some of the other thumbnails that I had and maybe some of the screenshots and references that I had saved prior to that so we can tackle those ideas as well. So one more thing before I talk about the coloring portion of Gaming, because I would like to talk about it a little bit more, is the fact that the reason why I like working on like thumbnailing and sketches on my sketchbook oftentimes is that I like having my ideas and like visual ideas kind of like scrapped into one place and sometimes when I have like digital files of poses and sketches on different layers on different canvases, I never find myself like opening them ever. So me being able to physically flip through my sketchbook i find a lot more accessible so i do like doing that also it's part of habit just because when i was in uni and i had to do a lot of thumbnailing before we tackled any illustration or anything like that it was always done traditionally so it's just something that i'm also very used to but moving on so for the coloring portion, I don't think I showed it in the video, probably because I forgot to hit record, but I went ahead and chose kind of like a peach colored or kind of like a yellowy color, blocked in the entirety of Gaming alongside with the lion head. So anything I wanted to color all at once, I put together into one blocked out uh, color that I then alpha locked so that we can color within that shape without bleeding out everywhere else. So I'm doing the same thing with his little companion but I'm doing it in red so I can kind of see where he occupies the space that I have currently and me kind of like alpha locking it makes it a little bit easier for me to keep things a little bit more clean and contained so I don't have to worry about like you know leaving outside the lines or wherever I kind of blocked out the color. So because the way how I color, it just makes it a little bit easier that way since I usually color on one layer for the most part, unless I need to make adjustments or I'm adding like the blend modes on top, which we'll tackle a little bit later. But because of that, I just find it easier for me to kind of alpha lock it so everything is just kind of contained into one area and then we can go ahead and you know add colors we can do gradients we can add shadow and lighting a little bit easier this way as well but you can also just use like layer clipping or like separating each of the individual parts however you like depending on how you like working it's just because this is how my brain works so i find it a little bit easier to work this way also, sometimes when I'm blocking in colors, especially you can see here for the lion head, I like to take in consideration the lighting a little bit first and then after that we can do like the details and then kind of like in a general sense if I block out the lighting for the most part, the smaller areas like the rim for this little portion of the lion head makes it a lot easier for me to transition colors to match the overall lighting because if I just put a flat black for the lion's head and then color things individually, I think I would get a little bit lost in terms of making sure the form and the shape of the object is correct. So when I was placing the kind of flat black for the lion's head, I already immediately put the gradation of where I think the lighting would hit on the left side so that when I added the other colors for the details I was making sure that things were lighter on the left darker on the right and making any color adjustments at that point so after we are done with the rough colors I will alpha lock my sketch layer and go ahead and change the sketch color to match a little bit closer to some of the areas that I have right here I'm also adding a multiply layer I believe to some of the areas to make it a little bit darker since I was a little bit lazy in terms of doing the shadows 
After that, I went ahead and also merged that sketch layer with the rough color layer and then made a new layer, which is addition or add. And I will layer clip this to the now merged color and sketch layer. Then I can kind of like do rim lighting, add some gradations if I need to. And I will do the same thing with multiply and overlay just to make sure that colors are kind of adjusted to what I'm happy with before we start the cleaning and rendering phase because I tend to merge my layers together and when I merge them together there's kind of no going back after that so I'm trying my best to plan everything at this point so rim lighting here and there I will might add some extra multiply layers if I need to add more shadows here is the overlay layer where I'm kind of adjusting the color temperature. So I'm making it very gold and warm at the very front, a little bit cooler near the shadows and the back of the illustration. Then after that, I will lower the opacity so that it's less intense. And then we have a very subtle kind of color shift to the, not exactly the whole piece, sometimes to the whole piece, but for this one, it's specifically only on to Gaming and the lion head. But then I will also do his little companion separately. So if I need to, I can make adjustments to him and not kind of fiddle around with Gaming. So even though pr both Procreate and Clip Studio Paint has the ability of kind of adjusting things like on separate layers at the same time, I do like merging my layers together. So it's easier for me to adjust Gaming's legs to be a little bit longer and a little bit lower on his body. Also, here's kind of the comparison that we're at right now, comparing to like my earlier thumbnail alongside to what we have before the rendering and cleanup stage. So they look similar enough, but they're still a little bit off. If anything, I still like my sketch a little bit more than the current piece that I have of Gaming. So yeah, I probably will do some other sketches of him to kind of like fulfill that itch of not making it look the way how I wanted it to look at the very beginning. But also because there's some other unexplored ideas I think could be fun to tackle. So I'll definitely refer back to my sketchbook if I plan to draw Gaming a little bit more from the previous ideas that I had thumbnailed. But let's move on to the cleanup and rendering phase. So this portion, now with my layers kind of merged, it's all onto one layer minus the background elements. So I went ahead and switched over to the sharp render brush, which is kind of more of a square brush that has the kind of very similar properties of the sketching brush where I have a lot of control over the opacity alongside with some tapering and just like pressure sensitivity. But this one has a little bit more of a sharper edge and it makes it a lot easier for me to do details and kind of sharpen everything up without having the need to kind of like press hard or worry about things looking faded because my painting brush has a much softer edge to it. So it makes it easier for things like gradients or making things transition a little bit more softly. And I think that's like more ideal when I'm placing down like the rough colors and doing like bigger bulkier areas that I want it to be a lot softer or it does have the capabilities of making more sharper, more bolder kind of I guess like crisp edges as well, but I definitely like using the sharp render whenever I'm doing detailing or I'm kind of sprucing up some of the areas, especially like clothing. Sometimes I want more of a sharper edge, but then I will leave a lot of my painterly kind of strokes from the larger brush untouched. So we have a good kind of, I guess like contrast between the two, but also it's just good to have both soft and hard edges. A lot of the times if you're doing like illustrations or, you know, playing around with different textures or materials for your drawing. So it's just, it's just nice to have that kind of contrast and difference between soft and hard edges for your drawings. But I think for the most part, I don't know if these will be spoilers for, because you guys already saw the finished illustration technically within like the first 30 seconds of the video. So I'll talk about my feelings about the overall piece while we are doing the rendering phase because this is kind of the more tedious portion and it's literally just me going back and forth like sprucing up edges, kind of fixing some lines, getting rid of like those stray edges of color that kind of leak out from the lines from earlier and all that jazz. So. In terms of the drawing, 
I definitely like it and I think it turned out really pretty. I do think it's a little bit busy in some areas, which is why I wished I had some exposed areas of the background rather than covering it up entirely with some of the flames and lighting elements alongside with the lanterns, which you will see me add a little bit later. But for the most part, I definitely like the drawing for the most part. But if I could, I think it would have been nice to keep with the vertical format and include more of the lion's head rather than cutting it off at such a weird placement because I definitely wish I represented that a little bit more because I definitely think him as a character and him being kind of like the lion dancer boy it would have been nice to include it a little bit more. It also had more fun colors and glowing aspects on it that I think visually would have looked nice for the composition as well and alongside with the colors. But you know, that's like something I could kind of would have been able to fix if I did a little bit more planning. I also didn't really talk about too much about references for when I'm planning a piece like this. So like I said, usually the thumbnailing stage is where I try to compile all my references. So this could be backgrounds, this could be color palettes. I was looking up a lot of lanterns, festival vibes, like a bunch of different things that could be included for an illustration like this. And it just kind of helps expand your visual library, especially if you're not used to drawing certain elements. So it's definitely good to do your research first as well to kind of give yourself a better idea of how you want to compose your entire drawing or illustration before you move on to the thumbnailing and sometimes I pull up reference during the entirety of the process so like when I was doing the colors I found a different reference to help me with the colors of the background which I knew I wanted to be kind of like some darker sky so I found one that was a little bit more I guess like navy bluish, I leaned more towards green a little bit as we move towards the bottom left. And then I was looking at references for the lanterns as well, because even though I think I know how to draw lanterns, sometimes I feel like I would draw them incorrectly. So it's good to pull up a reference just to make sure things look a little bit more accurate, even though I will be blurring these so that they're not super in focused anyways. But it kind of helps uh, build up your illustration slowly as well. So definitely use references where you don't know how to draw something or you want to kind of further the knowledge you already had about the subject. So yeah, I think we're just moving towards the last little finishing touches. And I think that's it for the drawing of Ga Ming. So this is kind of the composition alongside with the colors, color palette, and the final drawing of him. So let's go ahead and pull out my sketches from before. And you can kind of see, I guess like itty bitty parts that I took from certain aspects. I kind of wish I did this one. I think it would have been kind of cute, even though it was very like stationary, very much just like a straight on portrait. Um, yeah, I might tackle this one again, we'll see, but this is kind of the comparison of the sketch versus the kind of finished illustration. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the process for today's video. Hope you guys have a wonderful and happy new year, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!